good afternoon. My name is Randy Merritt, Wakulla County Commissioner, I'm Chair of the Capital Region Transportation Planning Agency, and I'm calling meeting to order. It's Tuesday, May 19, 2020, 1 30, and we are broadcasting this meeting on WCOT as well as online at www.talgov.com. This meeting is being conducted virtually and authorized pursuant to Governor's Executive Order Number 20 69, which was extended Order 20 112. Public comments desired to be made during this meeting may be submitted to the CRTPA's website at www.crtpa.org. Comments that have been received by 5 p.m. yesterday have been placed on the meeting's agenda webpage, which I don't think there were any comments, and provided to CRTPA members. Any comments received after that time will be accepted and included as part of the official record of this meeting. Let's go on to the roll call. Commissioner Barfield? Here. Uh, Commissioner via BCA? Here. Commissioner Mayor? Here. Commissioner Minor? Here. Commissioner Dozier? Here. Commissioner Maddox? Commissioner Maddox? Commissioner Deloge? Here. Commissioner Matlow? Commissioner Matlow? Commissioner William Cox? Commissioner Richardson? Here. Thank you. Okay, I guess we had no public comments, right, Greg? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I see that Commissioner Maddox is with us, but he appears, appears to be muted, so. Yeah, uh, Commissioner Maddox is there. I think he's on the phone. It looks like he's on the phone. Somebody, so. somebody bring him in and, and make him make him test, you know, um, oh, they, may, they may make him test once he Greg, I'll mute him back, please. So, I marked him. I'm sure, I'm sure I'm sure that the call file, we'll figure it out. He'll get off the phone eventually. Is there a motion on consent? So move. So move. Yeah. All right. The roll call vote. Yolanda? Commissioner Barfield? Yes. Commissioner via BCA? Yes. Commissioner Merritt? Aye. Commissioner Minor? Aye. Commissioner Dozier? Aye. Commissioner Deloge? Aye. Commissioner Metlo? Commissioner Richardson? Aye. Commissioner Maddox? He's still on the call. He's right on the phone. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right, Greg. I'm 6A. And if, what we're going to try for members that want to speak, hit your little hand thing there, and I'll try to keep track of it. But just bear with me, okay? Because I can't see everybody's name at one time. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, uh, transportation performance measures consent document uh, that's a requirement we had in the last couple of years if you recall we've been adopting various measures and uh greg burke's going to review this item with you all greg so go ahead okay good afternoon members as you may recall in october of last year you actually adopted this item as part of a appendix of our current transportation improvement program. Subsequently, uh, the Florida DOT has been informed by the FHA that they would like MPO to adopt this document as a standalone document. So that's what we're proposing to do today. All right, any comments from anybody? I would move staff recommendation on option one, Mr. Chairman. Second. Okay. No more uh, discussion, then we'll have the vote. Commissioner Barfield? Aye. Commissioner Villabicie? Aye. Commissioner Merritt? Aye. Commissioner Minor? Aye. Commissioner Dozier? Commissioner Dozier? Give me, ma'am. Aye. Thank you. Commissioner Maddox? Aye. Commissioner Deloge? Aye. Commissioner Matlow? Commissioner William Cox? Commissioner Richardson? Aye. Thank you. 
We still have a quorum, Nick, on the phone. Yes, sir, I believe we do. Exactly. All right. I see him moving. All right, Greg, next time. Okay, uh, this is a TIP amendment, and again, Mr. Burke will be covering this. Okay, uh, we are proposing to amend the TIP to add design funding for pedestrian safety signals at signalized intersections within various locations within Leon County. Move option one. Second. Second. Okay, I don't see any hands up, so Wanda. All right, Commissioner Barfield. Aye. Commissioner Villavicie. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Mayor. Yeah. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Minor. Aye. Commissioner Dozier. Commissioner Dozier. She said aye. I said lip, aye. I can read her lips. Aye. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Maddox. Aye. Commissioner Deloge. Aye. Commissioner Richardson? Aye. Thank you. Unanimously passes. Seven, eight, Greg. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Up next is our uh, draft unified planning work program. If you all recall, this is uh, the CRTPA's two year budget and work program. And here to present that is uh, Suzanne Lett. if we can get the technology to work. There you go. Thank you, everybody. It's Susan Lee, to... where are you? Hi. It's a pleasure to be here today to present this uh, document to you and to talk about the upcoming work program and some of the projects that are programmed in the work program. Um, this actually is a two-part agenda item, and the first part of it is to amend the current joint planning agreement at, along the UPWP to remove funds, unspent funds, so that they can be deobligated and moved into our current budget for the next two years. The okay, let's go ahead. Part, let's, let's do them one at a time. Um, okay. Is there a motion on that first item? I think it's pretty... And housekeeping item. So moved. Second. Okay, Luana, I don't see any hands up, so. Okay, Commissioner Barfield. Commissioner Barfield. Aye. Okay. Commissioner Villabicie. Aye. Commissioner Merritt. Aye. Commissioner Minor. Aye. Commissioner Dolphin? Aye. Commissioner Maddox? Aye. Commissioner Deloge? Aye. Commissioner Richardson? Aye. Unanimously passes on the first part of that item. Okay, Suzanne, sorry, go ahead. No worries, thank you very much. The next part, of course, is to introduce the new Unified Planning Work Program. I'm just gonna give you some highlights of um, the document. The work program, again, it contains our budget, our work products, uh, the time frame from completing the projects. It also has your administrative um, and program operational costs. It describes all the federally funded studies. Um, as well as identifying the funding sources, the funding schedules and responsible agencies. And it serves to coordinate the planning activities that will be undertaken by the, all the our partners in the regional planning process. This year, the, for the next two years, the total UPWP budget is just a little under $3.9 million. You can see how the allocated funding is allocated to us from our federal partners in the FHWA, FTA funds. FDOT provides us a soft match, which is 18.0%, 0.7% of the total federal funding. And then FDOT also provides us a cash match to our FTA funding. 
And then finally, the local funding in there is for the, the additional local funding is our cash match for FTA and funding for a few uneligible items. The funding is broken down into seven tasks. And you can okay, see- I'm um, seeing your hands up. Oh, Ms. Chairman, I don't think she was quite finished yet. Suzanne, were you showing the PowerPoint presentation? Yeah, is it not coming up? No, it's not coming up. Oh, I'm sorry. Try this again. I was gonna say, I thought there was supposed to be a PowerPoint. There is, and there it is. I'm sorry. I think I clicked off when I was trying to get my muted. Uh, there, there we go, okay. So I go from the beginning and I'll quickly scroll through to our current. So there is again, the overview that I provided about the UPWP. Here are the funding sources. And as you see, a majority of our funds, 84% come from Federal Highway and the, uh, Florida and the Federal Transit Administration. Our total budget there, as I said, a little under $3.9 million. And that does not include the soft match, which is 14% of the graph that you see there. Any questions on that? Moving on, here is the funding that is allocated by task. So the majority of our funding is, is allocated in task five and task seven, which is where our planning activities take place for special planning projects, safety studies, trail feasibility studies, intersection analysis, and um, this is where the bulk of our work occurs. And then again, the breakdown between the other areas, between administration, um, our short range planning is your tip and your project priorities, as well as uh, the local coordination. And then of task number six is our public involvement. Some of the highlights of our upcoming work program are um, the continuation to finalize the long range transportation planning uh, plan and the update to that, it'll be adopted in November. We are going to complete the comprehensive operational analysis with STAR Metro. This is our contribution to the project. They will manage it. We're gonna finalize the Thomasville Road Path Feasibility Study and this includes funds for public involvement. There'll be, uh, we're looking to do a Apalachee Parkway trail feasibility study. It's for a small piece on Apalachee Parkway uh, to connect the Southwood Greenway Trail. The second part of the congestion management plan we will, will be um, completed, which will identify projects for implementation. The Oak Ridge Trail feasibility study uh, we will continue the US-90 bike ped tra trail feasibility study from Monticello to Tallahassee. This includes additional funds for public involvement. Through an intersection analysis study at the Lake Bradford Stadium Gaines and Varsity intersection. We'll look to do a regional transit study update. We'll reevaluate that current regional transit study and evaluate where we need to go with that. And then we have funding that is set aside for future projects that will be identified by the board uh, in the upcoming annual workshops. And with that, are there any questions? Okay, hearing okay, that. Motion to adopt it. I move, 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 move for adoption. Okay. Second. Move for adoption. Second. Okay. Commissioner Barfield. Commissioner Barfield. Commissioner Bicia. Yeah. Commissioner Miner. Yeah, aye. Commissioner Dozier. Aye. Commissioner Maddox. Aye. Commissioner Deloge. 
And Commissioner Richardson. Aye. Unanimously passed. I voted aye too. I don't think you mentioned my name. That's okay. Oh, sorry, Commissioner Mayor. <laughs> I'll do a, a visual. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. We want to circle back and see if Commissioner Barfield's back on to give her a vote. Commissioner Barfield? Aye. Thank you. And if I may just let the board know that we will be distributing the final document with uh, all the funding finalized now with the de obligation monies and um, some of the project schedules that were not in there, and we will be doing uh, putting that up on our website after this meeting and distributing to all the interested parties as well. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Uh, where are we on, 7B? Uh, 7C, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is um, a request that we worked with the um, Chris Frito and the ARPC. If you recall a couple of years ago, we, um, sorry, I'm making sure I'm feedback feedback there. Um, we had a, we established an um, MOU with ARPC to manage the transportation disadvantage program for Leon County. Uh, in the last couple of years, the CRTPA has basically fun functioned as a pass-through agency for the planning front, fund for the Commission for Transportation Disadvantage. Uh, and actually, probably to make it a bit more administratively easy, what we're recommending is that we request the Commission for Transportation Disadvantage to recognize the ARPC as a designated planning agency and basically take us out of the administrative uh, mix and just allow them to um, seek reimbursement directly from the CTD. Okay, any questions? Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, you want Commissioner Barfield? Yes. Commissioner v BCA? Yes. Commissioner Merritt? Aye. Commissioner Minor? Aye. Commissioner Dozier? Aye. Commissioner Maddox? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Deloge? Aye. And Commissioner Richardson. Aye. Unanimously passes. And Mr. Chairman, if I could, I apologize. I did skip item 7B, the uh, regional mobility plan update. So, Jack, I apologize. I'll hand it back to you. I won't hold it against you. All right. All right. Item 7B. He, he just doesn't like me. He always forgets the RMP. I don't get it. Um, <laughs> The, uh, if, if you all remember back in February, we, we had presented a series of events that we were gonna pursue to ensure that the long range plan met the deadlines for June and, and ultimately for our November approval. Um, and unfortunately we were, we were kind of bypassed with some other quarantine issues and um, we weren't able to meet. However, the project did continue on and we've been working forward with um, identifying projects and costs and revenues associated with the, with the plan. And uh, Kimberly Horn uh, is, is on with us. There's Allison, Richard Barr, and Kate Witness, who are going to be doing a brief, brief presentation on where we're at and what we're going to be pursuing in the near future. So I'll turn it over to Allison. Thank you, Jack. I'm going to attempt to share my screen. Hopefully, this will work the way that I think that it's going to work. And it, can folks see my screen? Correct. Correct. I think we can. Very good. And uh, if if anyone has a question while I'm presenting, feel free to. Um, Jack, if you see anyone, uh, or Greg, or Greg, if you see anyone raising their hands, if you could just let me know, um, so that I can pause for that. That would be wonderful as well. Um, so, just wanted to. Uh, give you all a brief update on where we've been over the past couple of months, um, because despite all of the uh, COVID-19 shutdowns and uh, life and social distancing, we have been making forward progress with the regional mobility plan. Um, we had hoped to um, be in front of you a couple more times um, in the interim, 
but life being what it is, uh, what we've done instead is prepared an update for you this month of just some of our progress over the past couple of months. Um, that was included as an attachment in your agenda packet. So what I'm showing you on screen right now is part of your packet. So feel free to uh, reread this in its entirety um, at your leisure. Um, but I just wanted to hit a few highlights on this and feel free to ask any questions along the way or uh, when I follow up or when I conclude rather. So just to kind of tee this up, um, setting the stage for where we've been. Uh, when we last spoke to you all, uh, we really wanted to uh, place an emphasis during the preparation of this regional mobility plan on validating our regional goals, um, our project prioritization process, making sure that we continue to have a measurable public engagement campaign, and then uh, the development of projects. And that largely echoed what was done during the previous RMP, the Connections 2040. So we were able to really carry some of the things forward that were done during that, validate those things, and then hopefully grow those and echo um, or build upon those with new data and new information. So uh, as we talk about Connections 2045, one of the big changes uh, between the previous plan and this plan is that we do have the performance measures now in place. So we wanted to be sure that as we were finalizing those uh, prioritization measures, that we were echoing back to those performance measures, which of course are at a systems wide level and our prioritization is more at a project level. So having that uh, consistency, and then of course the introduction of some of the emerging trends that might not have been with us during the last planning effort. Things like resiliency um, for our system as well as uh, connected autonomous vehicles or other transportation technology. So we presented to you all a few times already on this plan, and we've had a chance to talk to you about some of the emerging trends, our updated goals, uh, introducing some of the initial thoughts for prioritization and how we might be approaching roadways and bicycle and pedestrian projects, and then also giving you an update on public engagement. And I do want to pause on this for a minute because clearly everyone's life has been a little bit upended because of COVID-19. And we're fortunate that we had a robust and successful public engagement campaign that kind of happened prior to things starting to slow down a bit. So with our project survey gaining over 300 participants, as well as our in-person events such as traffic jam, our regional workshops, and then some conversations that we've been having with our jurisdictions, it's really given us a very strong foundation to be able to build from as we move forward into recommendations and prioritization. So just moving into the recommendations uh, process itself, we have had the opportunity to go through all of our different modes and think about what, where we should be landing in terms of our recommendations. So touching first on roadways, uh, we pull from several different sources. Obviously, we think about first and foremost our previous planning activities, making sure that we are being respectful of some of those plans that have come before us, but also pulling in some new data um, that may be available to us, as well as the new engagement feedback that we heard through some of the uh, initiatives that I already talked to you about. And those start to manifest themselves into a few different project types. Things like corridor projects, intersection projects, interchange projects, and then interstate widening itself. And we categorize all of those separately because A, many of them have separate funding sources. That's not always the case, but it is sometimes. And then B, they need to be assessed a little bit differently um, as we go forward into uh, prioritization as well as financial constraints. So taking the next steps forward, we had, when we last spoke to you, started to outline a process for project prioritization for roadways. We have since then kind of been able to crystallize that a bit and come up with weighting criteria that really help us better understand how we are going to look at each of our different roadway projects. And I think the overarching message that I would want to convey here is, first off, these are very uh, directly related to our goals for the RMP. So all of these criteria address one or more of our project goals. By doing so, they also relate back to the federal planning goals as well as your performance measure areas. Secondly, 
we try to give a lot of and a lot of weight to things that are already underway uh, because we know that when we ultimately progress these things into consideration for state and federal funding, that that is going to be very important. So you'll see, for instance, project phases being complete is something that receives the highest weighting score. So thirdly, you'll just see a, a wide variety of different things in here because we do want to cover um, a gamut of different types of uh, considerations, uh, whether that be natural or social considerations, congestion, safety, um, or universal accessibility. All of those different types of things are really coming into the mix for roadways. There's even some others here. Um, one other thing I'll point out here, these are uh, included in point order, um, but we do have some consideration of new emerging topic areas such as resilience and travel and tourism and evacuation routes, as well as transportation technology. All of those are things that may not have been directly accounted for in the previous plan, but are things that we now feel may include the prioritization process. So we have to go through the prioritization exercise of all of our different roadway projects and generate a prioritized list. And while we don't have that included, because we'd really like to have a more detailed discussion that perhaps we can uh, embark on in the next meeting with y'all, um, we did just want to include a couple of examples of how a couple, a couple of demonstration projects might step their way through this. So we provided the seeds as well as Orange Avenue and how uh, particular features of those projects ultimately allowed them to score as high priorities within this system. Moving on to bicycle and pedestrian projects. So we had a really robust uh, starting point for our bicycle and pedestrian projects because obviously we have bike head plans for all four of our counties and most recently our Leon County bicycle and pedestrian plan um, that is just getting uh, wrapped up as well as the previous 2040 RM RMP. So this gave us a wealth of information, a wealth of different projects to start from. The other thing we wanted to be mindful of is when we think about bicycle and pedestrian projects, we actually have a chance to be really flexible with these projects. So we can start to think about not necessarily having to bring these all the way through a cost feasible planning process. When you ask the federal government, they're, they're not looking necessarily for that. FHWA is not looking for that in a, a successful regional mobility plan. What does that mean? That means you get added flexibility. As a project becomes of greater importance to you, you're allowed to carry it forward and hopefully secure the funding uh, that is available out there for bike head projects. So we wanted to just show how we are uh, taking a couple of our different projects and just documenting those within the plan. All of our recommendations from previous plans are going to be carried forward. Prioritization from previous plans is going to be carried forward where it's available and then new projects uh, that weren't prioritized previously will be added as well. So where are we now? Right now we are in kind of the final stage of all of this, which is in the development of our cost feasible plan. So this is, this is the fun part. <laughs> this is where we actually take a look at all of our available revenues and then we start to estimate the cost for our prioritized project and start to match things up. Now, as I mentioned earlier, what we have the luxury of doing, and it's a little bit of a change for how we've done things in the past, is we're really just going to be developing that cost feasible plan for our roadway project. So again, the reason why we do that is those are the regionally significant projects that are going to be ultimately seeking federal or state funding, and as such, they are required to be part of the cost feasible plan. So bicycle and pedestrian projects, even those that are independent projects, don't have to be part of that cost feasible today. They can kind of stand alone and be a little bit more opportunistic as that funding is available and as the need arises. Similarly, transit and navigation, they tend to follow their own short plans for those two various modes. So we want to carry those forward appropriately. So right now we're putting the finishing touches on this. We'll look forward to bringing all of this together to you in a package for you to review and actually look at the results of how things turned out in our cost feasible plan development. And that's something that hopefully we can be talking about 
here in the month of June or in uh, near upcoming meetings. So with that, I think I, I scrolled through this fairly quickly. Uh, again, this is in your packet if you want to review it in additional detail. But are there any questions for me, Richard or Kate? I don't see any hands up. Is this an action item, Greg, or just a presentation? No, sir, this was just an update on the RMP. Okay, let's move on then. 10A. Thank you, Allison. Thank you. Yes, sir. Item eight is uh, the FDOT report. Uh, Bryant, are you on the line? Yes, Greg. Have you already done item 10A? Uh, no, sir. We're just on item eight. Item eight? Mm hmm. Um, yeah, we just finished up 7A, B, and C. I don't even have to see that item eight. Anyway, go ahead. Brian, go ahead. Okay. Uh, the department uh, does not have any major updates at this time. We did want to state that the COVID 19 issues have not caused uh, much of any impact on our construction projects. Uh, for any questions you might have or considering this environment, if you would just like to email me or Greg any of your questions and concerns, I'll be glad to follow up on it. All right, Mr. Chairman, if you're ready, we can move into my report. I've got a few things here. Um, first of all, it's good to see everybody today. Um, we're going to bring you up today on a couple of three things. Um, we're winding down our fiscal year 19 um, financial audit. I can say it actually it's been going very well. Uh, it'll be completed on time. We're expecting it to be wrapped up by the end of June, which is our state. Uh, we're supposed to have it submitted to DOT by June 30th, and I think we'll make that with no problem this year. That's actually the first time in the last three or four years we've been able to make that date, so I'm extremely happy with that. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit and get some feedback about uh, our upcoming meetings. Typically in June, one of the big items on that is our annual project priorities list. Um, if you recall last year, that's when uh, the folks who were not happy with the Woodville Highway project um, first showed up and, and were, um, you know, said we're not happy with that project. I know Commissioner Richardson, I believe in our February meeting, had asked to talk about Orange Avenue as well. Um, I'm not really comfortable having those kind of conversations virtually. I think that's much more suited to an in-person meeting. Um, depending on where we are next month, I know uh, Chairman Merritt, you mentioned that Wakulla County, you guys are going to in-person meetings July 1st. Well, we went through the second meeting in June, but logistically, we're going to hold it in a bigger building so we can have social distancing. So that's the only reason we're putting it off. Okay. The one, one thing I want to put out to the board members, if anybody would be opposed to having an in-person meeting in July, should circumstances allow us to do that? Uh, I just think for things like the PPL list, um, that's that's a much better, that's much going to be much better to do in a live venue versus a virtual one. Again, I just want to say anybody is opposed to that. Anybody got any comments on that or is everybody fine? Okay. I just saw Commissioner Dozer unmuted, so I want to make sure that she didn't have a comment. Um, thank you, Greg. I uh, Raising the hand is not actually working today, so. Um, oh, I didn't see it. I, no, it's cool. I don't want to go backwards, but I'll just say um, to Allison and her team, if they're still on the Zoom, thank you for all your work. This isn't easy for anyone. Um, Greg, I think we're all going to be on the edge of getting back into the chambers and figuring out how that is going to be structured. So I'm comfortable with it, but I think like the city and county blueprint and everyone else, we're going to have to come up with a way to do social distancing while we're in that meeting and it may be easier in the city commission chambers than um the county frankly we're talking about having citizens down in a jury room and bringing them up one at a time but so i'm good with it i just think we need to have a plan um of how we're going to be seated at maybe the dais and the table how we're going to deal with citizens um how we're going to deal with staff things like that so so long as you guys are focused on that, um, I think, you know, planning ahead is good. And this could be the same measures we have to take for the next year. Yes, ma'am. Um, and that's kind of what, you know, I think first and foremost, we're kind of waiting to see what everybody else is doing. 
Um, you know, the since we're in the city hall and that's typically our meeting location, we'd probably have to follow the protocol that they're working on or what their final call would be. Um, but definitely, yeah, we, we, we would take all that into account. Uh, we've had some, some internal staff discussions about it. Um, you know, I mean, I could envision it being several large tables, you know, in addition to the ones we normally have and just everybody spread out. But we, we will definitely put that together, you know, as when, when the time warrants. Any more comments from members? Okay, Greg, did that give you your answer? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the next item I wanted to mention, and I believe Commissioner Richardson brought up the Orange Avenue pedestrian crossing back at our last meeting. Uh, DOT has agreed to do some additional study work for us. Uh, they're just going to have to wait until conditions get more to what you know we would call it a normal condition. So uh, hopefully over the next couple of months they can get that started. And hopefully develop some recommendations of what may, we may need to do in that area as well. And uh, I wanted to, Suzanne, you want to talk about the PPL meeting real quick? Thank you, Greg. Yes, on um, May 27th, Wednesday, May 27th, we will hold a virtual uh, WebEx meeting to present the priority project list. These, the, these, this meeting has been noticed in all of the local papers, so you should see it in uh, this upcoming edition this week, either Wednesday or Thursday depending on when your community publishes. Um, we have provided opportunities for people to provide comments beforehand. And then again, any comments we receive afterwards, we will also include as part of the record. And after this meeting, we are going to revisit additional public participation measures that we can take, um, depending on how, what the circumstances are come June. So I think you've received a notice on that and please share it. Um, with any parties in your community who may be interested. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Suzanne. And um, last, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to extend a personal thank you to Harold and Chase. Uh, those guys have been really helpful in, in working with us, getting this meeting going, uh, answered a lot of questions, and a lot of um, online training. So I just want to thank those guys for all the work they put in to help us get this meeting going. And, and thank you all for, for showing up today virtually anyway, and uh, allowing us to keep moving things forward. I think it went pretty smooth and Greg, I'd like you to make a special note. This is probably the first time in the history of mankind that Kristen didn't ask any questions, only had one comment. So make a note, please. <laughs> and away, Mr. Chair, without one more comment, just for that. Thank you very much. Um, it, uh, it did go smooth. Zooms and WebEx and everything else are cumbersome, but um, there was someone who was trying to watch on WCTV, and I he he said he was only seeing he wasn't seeing any of us. He was seeing the presentations. Um, I I know this is cumbersome and everything, but I I think it's worked well when city and county have aired it on our Facebook page live as well as okay. WCOT and uh, the city website. So. If we have to do another uh, virtual meeting, I think it might be good for us to do it on the Facebook page and see if we could switch back to the full screen like people are used to seeing us during discussion. Okay. Just, that's what people are getting used to. Well, yeah, that's and that good is my only comment, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you. Greg, so there is no Zoom meeting, is that correct? Uh, no, sir, we may still have a June meeting uh, to present the bike ped plan. Uh, we kind of just want to kind of play it by ear right now and, and see what the conditions are. Uh, there's a couple of things that um, if, if we don't do, it's just going to make that July meeting that much longer. So we'll kind of have to look at some logistics. And, and I, at this point, I would say we will have a June meeting, but there's a small chance we will cancel it in favor of a July meeting. We just, we're just going to kind of watch and see what the conditions are. Excellent. Okay. Well, I'll I'll say the meeting's done, and I'll see y'all on the internet in June, if it's not in person in July. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, this is yes. Diane Williams. I just want you to know that I was I was here. I got here a little tardy, but I'm here. Okay. We appreciate that. All right. Thank you all. See y'all next time. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.